short being 29 slides. So this is Remember, pollution is third, 25 to 30 percent of your um, exam. That's the first thing that we went over. So everything else is 10 to 15 percent. So importance of natural areas. This is fluffy stuff <laughs> for the most part. Uh, okay, economic services. That's an important term that you may see on the AP exam. It includes watershed management soil erosion, protection, climate regulation, wildlife habitat, and I think I gave you guys a project on that tonight, where it was basically what does the environment provide for you as a person or animals and plants in the environment? How does the environment help us, or what does it provide for us? It can provide entertainment. You know, the coastal ecosystem can provide entertainment, and it does in South Florida. Uh, it can provide food, it can provide water, it can provide cultural stuff, it can provide um, water purification, these things, um, climate regulation, and yeah, okay. So private citizens, corporations, and nonprofit organizations own about 50%, 55% of the land in the U.S., Federal government owns 35%. State and local governments own 7%. American, Native Americans own about 3%. Wilderness encompasses regions where land and its community organiza organisms have not been greatly disturbed by human activities and where humans visit but do not permanently mm -hmm. inhabit. Public lands designated as the National Park Wilderness Preserve System are protect protected from development. So that's like the national parks. Um, these are different wilderness things. <laughs> uh, problems with federally designated wilderness areas are overuse of some areas and introduction of invasive species. So Yellowstone National Park used to be have that situation, both with the with the gray wolf shooting them. And also with tourism, there are too many people going in and out and leaving trash and messing up the wilderness. Um, the Wild and Scenic Rivers Act was passed in 1968 to protect rivers and nice places to make them nice. National Park System administers 385 different sites, including 57 national parks. They're used for recreation, ecosystem preservation. Um, there's problems. <laughs> there's something called natural regulation. Letting nature take its course over time has been a management policy of National Yellowstone National Park and many other, other national parks since 1968. Too many people want to go to the national parks on vacation to see the nature. And when you have a bunch of people visiting a natural area, it's obviously somehow going to disturb them. You know, they're throwing trash away, they're walking through things, they're disturbing migratory patterns of birds and stuff. Um, okay, that. Yeah, you can read that. It's not too hard to understand. Um, okay, you can read that. So this is kind of fluffy stuff. Forests. Oh, there's ways that we can cut down trees. Selective cutting is uh, mature trees are cut individually or in small clusters while the rest of the forest remains intact. Shelter wood cutting means mature trees are from a forest in several harvests over a period of time. This method allows for mature trees to shelter younger trees. In seed tree cutting allows almost all trees are harvested from an area with the few remaining trees provide seeds for the regeneration of the forest. And clear cutting, this is the worst one, means cut everything down. That's what they're doing in the Brazilian rainforest. That's what people have a problem with is clear cutting. 
if they did this to natural forests, it wouldn't be so bad, but the clear cutting is worse, cutting everything down. Deforestation causes soil infertility, increased soil erosion, impairs watershed functioning. Watershed is not the same as runoff. Watershed is how the water trickles down through the roots, through the soil, through the rocks, into the water table. And if you cut trees down, it's going to just wash away all the topsoil as runoff. You want it to trickle down through the leaves, through the roots, through things like that. It helps filter the water, make it cleaner. It keeps everything wet and moist and growing really well. That's what a watershed is, how the water trickles through the ground to the groundwater table. Um, tropical forests. There's two types, tropical rainforest, tropical dry forest. Uh, they use the cut those down. It's not good. Um, boreal forest began in 1980. Okay, you can read that. I can't read that. Um, read that. Rangeland, that's grasses. Forbes. I think I made a mistake. Good for grazing sheep and cattle and stuff. And you have to carry it, you have to balance over the carrying capacity of the land. Overgrazing. Um, there's degradation to support future crops and livestock. Desertification. This is what happened in, I think, Grapes of Wrath, where they, where there was the Oklahoma Dust Bowl. They did desertification. They over processed the land overuse the land, it destroyed the nutrients so stuff wouldn't grow, and then all the topsoil turned into, you know, basically blew away and made a great, great big problem back in the 30s, 20s or 30s. And so that's why a lot of people moved west to try to find good um, places to plant, plant and agriculture. It's more government stuff. Wetlands, areas between aquatic and terrestrial ecosystems, can be freshwater or saltwater, uh, provides habitats, purifies natural bodies of water, recharges as groundwater. That means it puts water back into our drinking system. So the Everglades does that. It recharges our groundwater. So when we have a rainy season, it'll go, it'll do the watershed thing. It'll go down into the groundwater table and, and recharge the water that we use. Just like in the around here in Fort Lauderdale, that's what they did is they drained them and dredged them. That's why we have so many um, canals. It's because they were we were all basically this land was all. Um, marshland or, or wetlands and they basically drain them so we can build houses so we can have you know some agriculture but mainly down here so we can build houses and stuff.